Okay, welcome everyone. Please rise for the pledge. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. President Hammond. Here. Vice President Daly. Here. Trustee Clements. Here. Trustee Headland. Here. Trustee Parr. Here. I'll start. Uh, thank you, Ms. Hammond. Um, it's been a, a, a very sad couple of weeks for our community. Um, uh, as the board knows and many members of our community know, um, we lost uh, a beloved teacher in Lori Eisler on uh, December 30th. And um, as I said, Lori was beloved by our entire school community. Uh, she taught here for over 30 years. Uh, Lori was a graduate of Haldane. Uh, she was cared uh, deep. She cared deeply for our students and for our uh, her colleagues, uh, and they cared uh, very deeply for her. Um, I did not have the opportunity to get to know Lori very well, uh, but over the past two weeks, I've heard many stories of her, her kindness, her uh, her graciousness, uh, her professionalism, and uh, um, in many ways, we're still mourning and well for. A long time, I feel. So, with that, um, we'd like to have a, a moment of silence uh, in memory of Lori. Thank you. Um, just in addition to that, Ms. Hammond, I'd be remiss if I didn't also, and as I know the board would like to as well, just acknowledge the Griffin family. Uh, Mr. Aaron Griffin uh, passed away uh, suddenly last week as well. Uh, and I want the board to know we've reached out to the family and certainly sent our condolences and offered any support that we can offer at this time. Um, Mr. Griffin had two kids uh, in the school. And uh, again, we've reached out and we've made sure the family knows that they have our full support. Great, thanks. Thank you. I just also want to um, add a few words. I want to thank these entire community for really all the support. And um, it's really a testament of what type of community we're in um, and how everybody comes together in times of need. And it was truly appreciated. I also want to uh, thank our friends at Putnam Northern Westchester yep. BOCES, as well as the regional crisis team for all their assistance um, and support that they provided to our district during this difficult Great. time. Thank you. OK. Um, I just want to remind everyone that the next meeting of the Board of Ed is scheduled for January 22nd, uh, 7 PM, in the band room here. Um, and we'll see you in two weeks. <laughs> Uh, a few just announcements on my end. Uh, a reminder for the board that uh, we will have our joint meeting with the Garrison Board on Tuesday, February 5th, uh, which is one of our regularly scheduled meetings. Uh, the location of that meeting is still to be determined. Um, I have to still work that through with uh, Laura Mitchell and Garrison. Uh, also a reminder that our winter board retreat is February 1st. It's a Friday from 5 to 9 at Winter Hill. Uh, we reserve that space, so we're looking forward to that. And uh, John McCarthy and Lynn Allen will be facilitating that from Putnam Northern Westchester BOCES. Do you know what the um, garrison meeting will be looking like in terms of like content? It will will it be our usual yes. um, discussion about Haldane High School, Correct. pretty much for yeah. them, and answering their questions yes. about Haldane High School? Yes. And okay. Yeah all of that and Ms. Sniffin and I uh, went through uh, the um, outline of that presentation it's largely done because uh, she's providing a similar presentation to the parents of Garrison who will actually be here tomorrow night I believe of <coughs> incoming eighth, uh, eighth graders coming into ninth grade and um, so yes I believe it's pretty consistent with what's been done in the past it's been modified based on some feedback from uh, the Garrison uh, Board of Education on what specific, what specific information they're interested in seeing. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think roughly it's very similar to what's been presented in the past. And will we be having students there? Do you know about that piece? Yes. Uh, Ms. Sniffin and I talked about having a few former Garrison students present. Uh, we'll present a lot of data 
Mm -hmm. uh, but we are anticipating that the Garrison uh, board members may have a few questions for uh, former Garrison students, and we wanted to have a few kids there who are available to answer those questions. Great. Okay. I also just wanted to mention that the uh, water uh, damage remediation project was complete over the course of the uh, holiday break. Uh, Ms. Dinio had mentioned that uh, some time ago, uh, that that was the anticipated schedule. Uh, we will go ahead and upload, it, it should be in there now if you're in the live board docs um, under public uh, uh, information, uh, the summary report that was provided by the group that uh, completed the project. The good news is the scope of the remediation uh, was not as great as we had initially thought or as they had initially thought. Uh, so they were actually able to do uh, complete the project in less time, um, which I believe should equate to less money. <laughs> so <laughs> we'll see when the bill comes. Um, and uh, and again, that final report is available for, for the public or will be once uh, it's, uh, it's this there. is live. It's there. It should yeah. be. Yeah, we just uploaded that today um, a few hours ago. And finally, some happy news. Mr. Salem, who I mentioned oh, was expecting no. twins. Oh. There they are. There they are. Right. It's the Salem family, which uh, doubled in size uh, Sunday night. Uh, so Chris uh, and his wife, Gloria. Uh, Gloria gave birth to twins, and there's uh, little Christopher uh, and <laughs> Sophia. Um, are the two uh, Salem twins here. I thought here, you were so. going to say Christopher and Gloria. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The, um, uh, the family's doing very well. Uh, Chris is doing well. Nice. We're looking forward to his return. Mm -hmm. And uh, right now he's enjoying being dad. So. Nice. That was uh, the 6th? That was Sunday evening. So the 6th. Yes. <laughs> exciting times. He's glowing. Congratulations yeah. to everyone. It's exciting time, to say the least. And that concludes my <coughs> remarks. I think at this time we're going to transition to our next budget presentation, if that's okay. That's right. All right. So and I will swing over next to Margaret, it looks like. Tonight. Oh, is that what you'd rather do? Well, Anne will present there. So I'll he's say. not right in the way. Yeah. So tonight's presentation um, is about the administrative and capital components of our budget. If, um, as you know, there's three components to the final budget. There's administrative, capital, and instructional. Tonight we're going to review the capital and or the administrative and the capital components of the budget and also discuss two propositions, the annual vehicle proposition and the capital referendum. So the administrative component um, consists of these functions. So the way that our budget is organized, it's by account code, it's driven by account codes and primarily it is um, regarding functions. So the functions that are contained in the administrative part of the budget um, are what you see on this slide. Now within each function are different objects, and I'm just gonna use an example. In the office of the superintendent uh, function, it's not just the superintendent salary that you see when you look at a total line item. It's everything that drives the superintendent's office. It's clerical support, it's um, contractual items, it's conferences, it's workshops, it's material and supplies. So when I say the office of the superintendent, it's everything in his department, uh, not just salary. Um, again, the same is true for finance. In the business office, um, there's payroll, there's accounts payable, it's, it's even the software that runs payroll and taxes. Um, it's all of the items, all the expenditures for each of these functions. The instructional administration, that um, is the salaries of the building principals, the dean of students. Um, our dean of student is also the athletic director, so it's a prorated portion that is allocated to this category. Um, the related clerical support 
and all the costs related to these offices. So those are the components that make up the administrative component of the budget. It's about uh, 12 to 13 percent of the of the entire budget. This slide represents um, the trends over past years and the projections. Um, you'll see that their actual expenditures for 15, 16, 16, 17, and 17, 18. Our current year budget is 18, 19, so there's the original budget um, figure in that column. I've projected out the expenditures through the end of the year. Again, it's, it's, we're only halfway through the year, so that could change. And um, the proposed 1920, keep in mind that proposal one is, we haven't discussed that yet, it's not complete. So the figures that you're seeing in the 1920 column are the rollover budget figures, but for comparison. Can we go through and then come back, or do you want me to ask questions now? Let's go through. Okay. <laughs> you right. don't want me to start asking questions now. <laughs> Actually, Ann, I'm just going to ask, could you explain the Board of, I think we ask this question every year, the Board sorry, of Education, sorry, the Board of Education line, could you explain some of that is BOCES, um, None of that's none our of it, salary. None of it's salary. <laughs> well, yeah, <laughs> like your salary is included in right. there. Your salary of zero salary is included in there. Um, <laughs> but um, it's everything to to run, even um, running the election. Right. Um, so if I go back, it's conferences and workshops that the school board may attend. It's any materials and supplies. It's the district clerk expenses, um, her salary and uh, any expenses, uh, workshops that she may go to. It's the district meeting, it's a budget vote, the trustee election, um, paying for the, the voting machines and the, the election uh, the workers. Election workers. The Thanks. There's, there's a lot of expenses and that's all under school board costs. Okay. Thank you. Okay. May I make a, 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 I don't know if I wanna make a recommendation, but just propose something to consider before you post these right because all of these will be posted on the school's website right. I would consider putting an asterisk by the twenty four million nine hundred and thirty four thousand two hundred and ninety one dollars to indicate that this is not the proposed budget that this is a uh, the, the the rollover budget um, because I think for people I don't know how many people pick this kind of thing up and look sure. at it but I, I that yeah that's fine. Yeah. I, mm -hmm. I think, Ann, on this spreadsheet, if I'm not mistaken, because we, we made a notation on the next slide or one of the slides that follows, where we can make a note right below the co right below the spreadsheet itself um, and highlight particular areas, mm -hmm. and, and that way uh, folks even, understand that. Or even just call it, instead of proposed 1920, it could be called rollover. Well, Correct. Is it rollover? Well, except the, the whole column isn't rollover. The only thing that's rollover is 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 the is the is this is this number right here everything else though those numbers right there for the different components aren't necessarily rollover numbers they may reflect wait uh, or am actually, i wrong about you, that could take a moment and describe <laughs> what we're looking at for 1920 versus 1819 we have the budget for 1819 yep. which was approved for by, by the voters yep the projected 1819 expenditures through the end of the year Yep. And the proposed 1920 represents rollover budget figures. So oh, those are rollover budget, uh, Board of Education function, Office of the Superintendent functions, and the 24934291 is the total budget rollover budget because we don't have proposal one yet. But I, I certainly can change that to rollover 1920 if that so will, the, will help. So the delta between budget 2018-2019 uh, and 2019-2020, the only thing that has changed are the things that we discussed last time, which were primarily employee-based salaries, benefits, salaries and benefits. Correct. And any, so any um, benefit yeah but the benefits that we know yeah 
Uh, so there's no either programmatic change, which wouldn't be in this piece at all, or we need additional 5,000 for more law books. We're not at that point yet. Yep. That's proposal one, which so we the haven't budget, discussed. Uh, Okay, the total change 1920 over 1819 projected is a little wonky because 1819 projected is all in rollover and all the other changes that we've made, and the 1920 is just rollover, meaning it's just ex just employee expense increases. Is that correct? That's correct. Okay, thank you. Oh, I misunderstood. I actually assumed that these numbers might have already included some things that may be just because the the, the changes from the budget to 2019-20 were so variable I had actually assumed it might have included some things that you already that 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 you had already wanted to, to include and wasn't necessarily straight rollover not necessarily although um, several of these lines I would not anticipate much of a change between now and proposal one because they often reflect relatively stable uh, or, or costs that are relatively easy to project okay. into into next school year okay. with little change. Right. If, if okay. you look at the percent of budget, the very last line, you see that they are stable amounts. There's no spikes and, right. and there's no, and we don't anticipate any surprises to the end of the year in these categories. Um, certainly, if it will help, if you think that this is a useful slide, um, first of all, I can change proposed 1920 to rollover 1920, and going forward, if you want to see how it changes in relation, you know, we can put proposal one 1920 up there so that you can know which side you're looking at yeah, if you like this helpful. information. I think that would be great. Okay. Thank you. Can you also okay. detail in the special items? Special items are insurance. Uh -huh. um, student accident insurance, right. liability insurance. Um, we have a figure in there for anticipated tax certiaries, refunds um, mm -hmm. for that, uh, district membership dues, BOCES administrative costs. Mm -hmm. Those are all in special items, but they're in the administrative portion. Is that anywhere, Those that detail for anybody to see who is actually looking at this? Yes, in the in the budget document itself, from yeah. year to year, right. these expenditures don't really change. the The titles of the functions, the um, the detail within each function might change. Like we might go from uh, twelve maintenance workers to fourteen maintenance workers, and that would be in the description. <laughs> but the description, bless you, the description of what's in each category. If you look at any uh, final budget document. Right, but I mean right now in this process, they would have to pull up the final budget document from 1819. Correct. And cross-reference. Correct. Correct. Yeah. Ann and I have talked about um, in looking at how some other districts, uh, again, in the spirit of transparency or just um, educating the community who, who would want to know on any given line what's included in that, uh, either changing the format of how a master spreadsheet perhaps is formulated where you could hover over it and see a description that pops up. If you're hovering over administration or special items, you'd see a brief yeah. description of what that includes that or having a companion or an addendum uh, to uh, um, each of the budget presentations right along there so you could look it up instead of having to go back to the previous year. Uh, I don't know if we'll be able to get there quite in this year's budget process, but I do think that would be a best practice. Uh, so folks, you know, what central services, uh, you know, the lay community member isn't, I, I would not assume would know what that is or what's included in it, but there is, would be a readily accessible way for them to come to understand what that yeah. includes as their information. Yeah. So long term, that's the goal. Uh, I don't know, again, if we'll be able to do it as we're going along here because we're, we're changing <laughs> some things with how we're approaching this. And I noticed that on this first yeah. slide. It's a little, <laughs> I like it. Okay. Good. <laughs> Good. I like it too. Yeah. Okay. okay. Thank you. Moving on to the capital component, which, uh, as you can see, are a lot fewer. Um, lines on this operations and maintenance function again is a broad title it includes salaries of cleaners maintenance and support staff 
It's also the cost of operating the, the entire campus. All the utilities are in this category. The fuel oil, the electricity, um, projects, repairs, maintenance of grounds. Um, this is, interestingly enough, this is also the category where our school resource officer and the peace officer is paid out of. And um, I just, probably because it was process of elimination, it didn't really fit anywhere else, so uh, the state uh, gave it a code in operations and maintenance. So you might notice a, a jump um, that, that would be out of the ordinary for this last year and this year, and that's because we've added uh, another position. We added the peace officer. Um, the debt service, our bond principal and interest costs, um, including the bond anticipation notes that we refer to often, and those are the short-term debt instruments that we pay off within five years. If you don't pay a bond anticipation note within five years, you have to bond it. And interfund transfers we'll get into on the next slide because um, that could probably be a little bit um, more confusing. So that's why I highlighted it in yellow so that uh, we could talk about that. The other items, uh, same as the uh, administrative component uh, comparison, the three years of actual expenditures, the budget, the projected, and the proposed, which is, again, rollover figures. So if you look at what's highlighted in yellow, those are interfund transfers. So in the years where there's actual expenditures, 15, 16, 16, 17, 17, 18, they're very large numbers. What's originally budgeted is the $90,000. And the $90,000 is our 20, it adds up to our $20,000 of um, the, for the cafeteria, for operating, it's our local share operating uh, contribution. It's 20% of the summer um, special education costs that we're required to pay. Any um, programs that we would send students to over the summer, the state reimburses us 80%, but it's up to the district to pay 20. And then there's the interfund transfer we budget for the repair fund. That was the intent ever since we built the, um, the turf field was if we got any fees for the turf field, we would transfer it to the repair fund for future carpet replacement. So at the end of the year, everybody remembers that we have ex if we have excess fund balance over our 4%, we've been transferring that to the capital fund or the capital reserve fund. At the end of the year, the interfund transfers are adjusted by those transfers. And that's why in those three years, you see the $90,000 has grown because we um, increased our interfund transfers with excess fund balance. Mm -hmm. I still have everyone? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> We've got it. Roughly. Okay. And again, stable, they're stable numbers. If you look at the, the percent of budget, it's, um, it's very consistent. There's, there aren't any surprises. Um, just, just a quick question on that. Yes, they're stable. Uh, both have been growing over the course of the past, mm -hmm. since 15, 16. So this is the first two, there are three parts of the budget, right? The, this is one and two, and then there's program? Uh, there's program. Okay. So the, coming from uh, when I was in nonprofit fundraising, we always wanted to make the percent that you spent on overhead go down and the percent that you dedicated towards the program go up. So if I looked at this cynically, I would say the percent that's going towards capital and admin is going up and the percent that's going to program is going down. Now, I'm sure there's a good reason for that. So I'll ask, <laughs> what's the reason for that? I always want to let Ann answer first. So <laughs> You're like, I'm going to take a big have, breath <laughs> and see if she jumps <laughs> in. <laughs> I, how did you figure, how did you determine that the percentage towards program is going down? How, where because, did you come up? Because, okay, so this is 1%, this uh -huh. 15%, has gone from 13 to 15. Oh, gotcha. The yes, previous thanks. one has gone from 10 to 13, thanks. so that's a 3% delta. Yeah. So 3% on 25 million is $750,000, which I would love to put towards program. And there's a lot in program, which is also employee benefits and all that sort of right. stuff. So I guess 
I think on the administrative end, one thing that just comes to mind is we don't, as a smaller school system, realize some economy of scale um, right. the way other districts may. So it's not unusual in a smaller school system to see the administrative component as a higher uh, proportion of your total cost in comparison to the other two program areas, or the other two areas, excuse yeah. me, the capital and the program. Um, so that's initially what comes to mind. Uh, again, Anne, if you can go back to the slide, please, uh, for the administrative piece. I think that makes sense as mm -hmm. a, if I compare the percentage per, percentage here versus percentage right. at a big school district, I would expect it is. admin here be to higher. be bigger. Yeah. I'm just, I'm interested in the trend. Right. So the trend I'd have to give and a little more time and I don't thought know to yeah. uh, because as I, uh, Ann and I certainly went through this and uh, some things jump out in terms of our spending, uh, but it could be dictated by a contractual benefit. Uh, for example, um, at the end of 1718, right. you see a bump in the office of the superintendent, and part of that's driven by a contractual benefit, maybe unused vacation time right. that's being paid out as uh, one superintendent leaves. Right. Um, so that's just one example and other benefits that come out. So I, I say these lines are a little more sensitive to just one individual at times, which right. can drive that if there's a personnel change, um, which in a, in a larger budget, it wouldn't you get absorbed. It, yeah, yeah, it would be absorbed. Yeah. Um, so that's just an initial thought that jumps out at me. Um, you know, when I look at the total budget, in 1819 and that we're we're likely to we were at we were budgeted at 2.8 roughly 2.79 2.8 if I'm rounding up and next year we're budgeting at 2.85 um, it's not uh, a significant increase when you consider all of the work that's going in in these areas um, uh, comparatively uh, but um, it would be something that we would need to sit with a little bit longer to uh, think about what's influencing the Costs. All right, just uh, just from an optics perspective, the other thing is like they're both going up faster than our overall budget. Will, right. Period. End of story. Agreed. Uh, so we're in, we're still in rollover. Yep. Right. So we're mm -hmm. still in like Correct. this is all going to move. Correct. Yeah. But from an optics perspective, yep. they're like we're pouring we're putting more money into Understood. admin and cat. Right. Yep. Here, right. We wanna we wanna keep everything close to the two percent uh, or yeah. two point five percent, whatever our tax cap is. Right. Especially the costs that we can control directly. Right. Um, so understood. Yep. And on that note, since I haven't completed the grid for the program part, and I'm sure that one's going to go. Yeah. Well, I I would want to I would want to see does it add up to a hundred? Right. Because I'm I'm allocating employee benefits to each of the three components. Yeah, yeah. It should. Um, yeah. But I want to see how the percentages are in relation. Uh, yep. okay. So to, I think that I want to I'm talk sorry, about yeah. that then. And just to clarify, and percent increase there of 7.13 percent is the um, percent increase from where we're projected mm -hmm. to what's proposed or what's being rolled over right. we're projected lower because we're not spending what we budgeted this year right. <laughs> so I, I think um, perhaps a more I don't know f fair is that's the wrong term is to go from what we budgeted in 1819 to what we're rolling over in 1920 because if you notice, we're projected to be um, over $130,000 under budget this year, yeah. right now. And that's being, that's what the, the difference is that Ann's accounting for. I think maybe we should be looking at the budget for 1819, because that's what we budgeted for, uh, versus what we're budgeting for potentially for 1920. Um, and realize and realize this is still rollover. This is correct. still like correct. everything we know is going to happen, and then right. you roll in right. programmatic stuff right. and things you actually right. want to change. But right, but that number is much more closer to two percent right. than yeah, yeah. You know the fact that we're underspending um, in in certain areas uh, this year. Uh, the question then becomes: If we're not spending as much as we had anticipated in 1819, should our rollover budget be reflective of what we spent this year, or should it be reflective of what we had budgeted for this year? And and there's some questions that we have to resolve with that. Okay. Does that so make sense? Do you understand where I'm coming from? Okay. And this is good because we've, 
you've never seen the slide before. Right. This is new, and um, so it's good that you're you're picking out things to just make it useful. You know, if it's not a useful slide, then we change it to. It's not like we used it last year and we know what you like and yeah, what you didn't great. like, so that's good. <laughs> I feel this, <laughs> this is, is good. much more organized, and I'm more appreciative of this type of slide. Um, so some of these things may be popping out, mm -hmm. and I know there's answers. Um, right, well, it brings when, out good questions, right. so that um, that's good. You know, one thing that I thought about on the next um, slide where we were where John initially brought this up is you mentioned two things, an increase because of the um, peace officer. Mm -hmm. um, this component is highly driven by overtime as well, right? Uh, well, depending on um, the drivers and the overtime know, is overtime in there activities. and activities. We've had the reorganization. Right. <laughs> and the reorg. So those were two things that popped out. So even though, um, and, and still when I did the projection, um, the, um, the reorganization was budget neutral. We, we talked about positions that were lost or that people had retired and um, changing them to new ones. This could get better because it's hoped that the reorganization is going to address the need for a lot of the overtime that's happening that was really too much and we were some relying of it was on it good over time i mean we took two um, oh absolutely you know teams to space oh yeah. sorry <laughs> so in retrospect we get it you know we we did have some um additional expenses but well worth it i also and i don't not to be cantankerous but i'm not sure that i would um I'm not sure, not this slide, but the two, the administrative component. I'm not sure, even though it's called administration, I don't think it's administration in the same way that I might think of administration and nonprofit. I would think of the office of the superintendent, even though it falls outside of, for example, uh, the, the, the program component as, as solidly part of the, you know, of, of the educational program. Certainly some of it may be, you know, like, um, when I say administrative staff, I mean administrative assistant type staff. But like Phil's job is is running the educational system of the of the district. The principal's job is to is to run and oversee and develop the programmatic component. So not that I disagree with you completely, but I, I don't see this as administration in the same way I might see it as administration in a different kind of organization. That's fair. From my understanding the principals are not in here. Yes, they're the principals under administration. Are they? Yeah, they're administration. Okay. Right. And yeah, I didn't devise fine. this. Just, this is the controller's office, um, okay. and this is yeah, the yeah, way is that the this is state mandated um, three part budget. It's called, right. and they um, the state and the controller's office dictate by budget code what belongs in each component. Right. So, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. But it's a great observation also, I mean, to see how as, the, as a percentage of the budget, it's changed over time. That's not something I've noticed before. And, and, and that's a really, that's a great thing for us to have in mind as we, as we look at this and think about it. Can I say one more thing about the way it shows? So under the budget and the projected for 2018, 2019, the number is the same, but the percentage is different. So when you look at the bottom, even though I can tell that number is probably the same as my guess, because you're, the total, you just move that number from budget to projected, but see how the percentages are different? Mm -hmm. So that 11.6 is actually of the 279620. Correct. And the 11.08 is the 266767, but you see how the, like they're, since they're paired together, it feels like it should match, and that's in both slides. Yeah, it's oh, always so fun. That's, that's a good point. Yeah, we'll, data we'll look at that before we take it. this on the road. Like if I looked at that, I would like I would look at that. You need one more. Your math's wrong. That's a good point, Margaret. Need to like move them over one more. Right. The bottom. No, she wants the projected eighteen nineteen budget total to reflect the current projection of less than. 
2472. Right? Because if we're, if we're projecting that 1819 we're spending less than we thought we were going to with our budget, then if we end up spending less, what would the total be? The total wouldn't be 2472. Right? The total would be less than that. Right. right. Well, but it's it's right it's still the it, it's not necessarily the money right. that we spend, but it's still the budget. That's the amount of money that we are going to do something with at the end of the year. But if it that will was be the case, spent. Then those two numbers would be the same. The percentage. No, they wouldn't, would be because the, the projection's going down. The two six six seven is a smaller portion of the twenty four. Correct. Oh seven oh. But so to Margaret's point, so there's there's there, there's a fourth component which is slush. Right. It's <laughs> called go, excess fund balance. That's, that's that's fund balance. <laughs> Sorry, we, that's we, a technical we don't term. use that word. I know it's a technical. <laughs> that makes it seem like I there's know. fluff. No, I know. Which there isn't. There's not. So then, on that note, um, the fifteen percent right. and the fourteen point six seven, same thing, because right. of the smaller amount of or under total. As compared to budget, that's a percentage of the total of the slide to budget on each line. But keep in mind that at the end of the year, if there is excess fund balance, that ninety thousand dollars is going to change. Right. There's going to be an actual column, and that's going to change, right. change and that percentage it. is going to go up then. Right. 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 Okay. Shall I move on? Sorry. Yes. If you no, dare. that's okay. <laughs> I just want to make sure we're comfortable. There's no more questions. Okay. So um, <coughs> we're going to move right into Proposition 2, which is our vehicle purchase. And this year um, we've identified that there's one bus that needs replacement. It's a 30-passenger school bus. The one that um, – the bus that we bought um, with last – May's vote um, is really useful. It's going, um, it's in between. We usually get a 22 passenger bus when we get a small van, and the 66 passenger bus is just too big. Um, this is really coming in handy for sports trips and that because we don't have to run the big bus. The second item on this list is uh, a maintenance vehicle, it's a smaller. Um, ATV with a dump body and accessories that will help with snow removal, will also help with uh, maintenance around the campus, and um, this will save wear and tear on our Kubota, which we use to move um, some equipment and materials, and it's really, um, it's a big vehicle to use for some of the, the smaller jobs. So this will definitely be useful. You don't have to answer this question now. Um, when do we anticipate the propane buses being replaced? You don't have to answer that because I know the use on the propane buses isn't as useful as maybe one of these 30 passengers, but maybe it's something to look into to see how much longer those will be on our... Right. Those are going, we've discussed this, and um, we have two of them. The, the first one we got with a grant, which really, it only cost us a few thousand dollars, I think, at the time. It might have been 15000 for the big bus. And at the time, it was very popular, and we were, oh, this is great. We're going to reduce our footprint. Let's get another propane bus. So we bought a van of propane. Then we realized that there's not a whole lot of places to fill up, and it doesn't get as uh, the range. The, for the bus, uh, you have to make sure you're not going too far with it or you might not get back. Um, and we don't have a filling station on campus for it, so we didn't buy any more. Um, there are right for certain trips. You can't send it out on, on every trip. Um, but we're looking into, you know, it, could we get more use out of a, a gas-powered or a diesel? Absolutely. So when they're ready, they're going to be traded in, and we'll, we'll get a nice trade-in value for them. We're still getting some use out of them. And it's nice because the repair on the propane bus um, is less than on a gas-powered engine. The propane does last longer. Um, it needs less repair. It's clean because it runs cleaner. Um, 
but we we have discussed that that they're not as useful as we thought they were going to be they, it di didn't catch on right. you know it just really didn't well the gas stations didn't catch on no they did because didn't. they, they could didn't. be making uh, some money yeah. right and if there was if there was that places for us to, to yeah. fill them on a sports on a trip, trip then we would take them right. But yeah, it, it's just cumbersome. You don't want to be stuck. But the point I was getting at is these 30 passengers, if we're finding these to be more useful, you know. They are. We, we like to I have a very we have to wait our turn. We have to, we have to wait propane a little bit. Tanks. The propane the propane buses are still, um, we're still getting some use out of them. Um, we're not going to propose that we buy any more uh, unless things change out where we can fill them up. But we also have to make sure we have enough of the big buses, too. Right. So it's nice that we have a, a varied fleet that's coming in handy. So Proposition 3 is our capital referendum. And um, our Buildings and Grounds Committee worked very hard on, on narrowing, uh, helping us to narrow down our list. and. Um, the items on the list seem to uh, swirl around health and safety and our facilities and program improvement and these are overlapping because although items on the list made it into these three categories someone could argue that well that belongs on the other list but they all affect each other they really do so as you'll see as we go through the list of items that um, were proposing to include in this referendum um, you'll see that they're they're in categories because of an opinion so the items <laughs> under health and safety first one we've been talking about for a long time that's to move the electrical panel from the pump room and just the words alone should tell you <laughs> <laughs> Why this, is a good idea. why this is a good idea um, the bus lift uh, hasn't always been on the list it recently um, we found out that it needs repair we had someone come in today actually to uh, do an assessment on it and I'll have a discussion with Nabil tomorrow I just want to let you know I wouldn't be surprised to see this come off of this list and um, we come to the board for maybe another public hearing to use repair fund, um, repair reserve fund money for this um, because I don't know that it can wait. It's a, mm -hmm. it's a real safety issue. What's the bus lift? Is that to lift like a wheelchair into? No, that's to actually lift the oh, bus. lift the bus up so to get that they can work it under it. To work on it. Yes. Okay, got it. Thank you. Okay. Um, the ceiling tile replacement in Mabel Merritt building. Um, there's slight asbestos percentage in the, the ceiling tiles. Um, because there's any at all, it needs to be an abatement project. Um, so we can't really do any work or any changes. We can't put up any temporary walls um, because of that. And it's it's just time to do this so that we could, we could uh, use that first floor in a, in a better way. Access to the second floor mechanicals in the high school. I think we talked about this before, that when we have to get up to the uh, second floor, or the third floor in the high school, um, we have to put a ladder up, take a ceiling tile off. This isn't doing any big renovation except getting a more permanent ladder in a safer place, one that um, we can use. It's, it's permanently affixed to a wall but it's also locked so that people just can't climb up there whenever. Um, if something were to happen up in the mechanical room in the high school, we would definitely need you know, to have someone come in to get access up there. This isn't <coughs> gonna solve all the problems, bless you, but it will certainly help with safety for our guys when they need to go up there. Uh, replacing the cafeteria air handling units, the water heater replacement, the cafeteria kitchen equipment, the flooring out here that, that we all looked at on our tour, and the table replacement. Um, we've talked about this. Um, the, it's the original equipment and the original ovens in the kitchen. Um, they're, they're dangerous at times. 
the freezer freezes shut and we can't open it. We talked about how we've had to bring food you know, elsewhere for storage while it gets replaced. Um, this is all part of the, of the referendum. Guide rails along Craig, Craigside Drive. This is um, the slope going down to the turf field, um, putting guardrails, guide rails, um, whatever the, the term, whoever wants to call it, whatever, um, up along Craigside Drive. Um, window screens in the, in the middle school so that they can open up the windows and get fresh air without bees coming in. All of the items on this list under health and safety um, are really going to be addressed after our security audit and based on the recommendations. Um, I know that we've been discussing some of the items on this list for, uh, for some time and we have some quotes. These upgrades are, are expensive. So without clear specifications and suggestions, um, instead of diving right into any one of them, decided to wait and after the audit and we know what the recommendations are to make thoughtful decisions on, on systems that talk to each other and that aren't standalone systems wasting our money. When are we expecting that audit to be It'll available? begin before uh, the month ends. Uh, and I talked to uh, Mr. LaBlacca, who was here, about the turnaround time. So the audit itself um, will be happen fairly quickly. It's the report that we're going to be waiting for. Um, and he understands that we may have an opportunity here to include uh, and address some of the recommendations that are made through this project. Uh, so he's uh, indicated he'll make every effort to make sure the um, written audit uh, process is expedited so we get that and as uh, quickly as possible so we can review it and determine if there's anything from it we want to try to include in this. Mm -hmm. There are a few things, as Ann is saying, though, we know need to be done. Uh, we know our cameras need to be upgraded. Um, we know our phone system needs to be upgraded. Um, door access is an issue. Uh, Staley, you and I were actually talking about that in one of our, as we walked by each other today, because mm -hmm. um, there was an issue with the door uh, not shutting properly. Um, so uh, those are things that are going to show up in the audit, but we can already account for um, in our planning. Okay. The visitor management system was what we discussed last year. Um, is that what scholarship? Scholarship or yes, something yes. similar. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, something similar. As right. Well. The issue with um, uh, not the, an issue, but the piece we have to really work through with Alteris is most visitor management systems now have an integration with your camera system. So I think we alluded to this. Uh, perhaps a couple months ago when we talked about it. We just want to make sure whatever steps we're taking with a visitor management system, we're not doing work that we're going to have to come back to. Um, we want to make sure if systems can be integrated that we're, uh, we're accounting for that in um, uh, replacement or upgrade. Right, and that the right choice is made, right. you know, and we can implement it properly. That sounds good. Just uh, two quick questions, maybe, and maybe I'm jumping the gun because I, so the, the recommendations on this are going to be coming post Alteris. So I'm assuming costs are also undetermined. Maybe it's a question for at the end, are we setting up, aiming towards a number, and then some of the components will flex depending on A, what we need to do, B, what the costs are to hit? Is that kind That's, of the, okay, great. That is correct. Yes, I, I, I do think we're, it is going to be something we can discuss as well, though. Um, there, will become a, there will come a point where we have to lock in. Yeah. Um, but I think part of what, uh, how we've been operating is we want to set this up uh, in a manner, and Ann will get to it momentarily, so that there is um, as little to no tax impact um, as possible, which limit, if that's what we're going to stick with, um, then... Uh, we obviously are going to make the scope of the work fit <laughs> into that scenario. Um. Right. Usually when you have the referendum, you have um, you know, quotes that you've, that you've received and you have a target amount. Um, there are some things that you would propose as alternates when you send out the bid. So that depends on 
when after the bidding process, when you uh, decide the work, this is the work we definitely want to do, and based uh, on quotes, okay. these are alternates. Um, number one would be done first, then number two, oh, if it. we have room in that, it, when, when the financing is ultimately done. And that is, you know, first you present the referendum and that's what the voters will vote on, yep. that yes, this is the scope of work. Right. But it's not until a year later that you're sending out bids yeah. and you know what you can really, <laughs> what you can really afford. Okay. Um, and prices so may change dramatically in Prices that year, may right? change, oh they may be to our benefit, they may not. So we have our, if you would, our wish list, yep. and the details can come with more discussion about, all right, what's going to be an alternate that might have to wait till next time, or, you know, we still have two years left before we're going to do any financing, and we'll get to that when we look at the... Yep. the uh, scope and the, the source of funds. Um, there might be excess fund balance over the next two years that you might want to put toward this as well. So there's, there's still more discussions, but right now, just to um, have the proposition to get the approval to move forward with the scope of work. Got it. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Um, so on this referendum is the full window replacement in the elementary school, including the sills and the stairwell, curtain wall, and the exterior doors. Now, I know that we talked several times about, well, can we just replace the sills or repair the sills? How long are those egress windows? Uh, we, we made some modifications to them. Um, and with, after all of the research and the, the discussions with uh, people who, you know, windows are their, their expertise, um, we could maybe get five more years investing and doing a partial repair, but that's only five years. So spending that money and spending more on it and getting a full replacement you know five years from now when we might be talking about another referendum for other things we don't have to talk about the windows anymore because we've been talking about them for years for a long time so um, incorporated in this is just having them all replaced and upgraded and, and you know it's not falling out anymore not falling out yeah that would be good so um, the playground equipment, again, it's not a new playground that we're proposing. This is to replace the swing sets, which have been out there, you know. Since Laura was in the school. <laughs> Laura, Laura was Laura swinging, was on them swinging on those. In first grade. actually. They were just pushed up higher, but, but the same I think swings, they are the same The swings. same swings. <laughs> <laughs> the, and the same was saying that they... they Pop out the they pop yeah. out, yeah. So that could be an extra <laughs> ride. <laughs> that we don't I've seen them pop out many times. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they may not be sized for you, just to put it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I wasn't on it, but uh -huh. <laughs> the paving project that we're talking about is um, right uh, outside the Bell lot, down to um, the end of the cafeteria lot, where Craigside, where the the residential area stops. Um, that really really needs to be repaved so that's incorporated in this referendum as well fencing uh, mostly out here where I think that when we were on our walk we may have did we look over at the fence that was um, I, I think I was with the superintendent year. we didn't this year uh, it's the same fence, the same same fence. fence. just a little rustier year. and actually um, there's a new improvement to it there's a golf club cover that's covering the pointiest part of it and I sent Dr. Bernante a picture and said, this is the latest addition to this dilapidated fence. Mm -hmm. so, so that's why it's on the list. Um, some storage building um, upgrades so that we can keep our equipment safe and when, make it last longer. When we got talked, I'm sorry, just to back up to the paving. When Are you also, I feel like we've talked about paving where there, there's that kind of like unofficial little parking lot that happens um, when by there's the overspill by the Eagle and then we've talked in the past of making that real parking space and like paving it and is that part of that 
pave yeah, down. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right out here, right? Yeah. That's the area you're talking about. Yeah, it's kind yeah. of this unofficial gravel hill place that people spill over to. Yeah, we, we've show, talked about it. I know when the show uh, gets close to the performances, you'll sometimes have 15 cars in that unofficial parking lot. Yeah. yeah. It's pretty crazy. <laughs> yeah. We've talked about it. I don't know if that where that ended up, if it ended up anywhere. I don't believe that's included in here. Uh, I'd like to talk to Nabil a little more about it, or perhaps Ann and I both can. There are issues in just taking with runoff and whatnot. If you're just uh, looking at a spot and want to pave it, um, uh -huh. that can have some unintended consequences you know, a couple of years down the, down the line if you don't incorporate drainage and whatnot sure. to that area. Um, where you get wash out and then your yep. your parking lot starts to or your paved area starts to crumble uh, Nabil tends to have a pretty good take on this sort of thing so we can run that by him another area uh, we were discussing was because uh, I was meeting with some students at the high school about their parking lot <laughs> uh, which is just gravel <laughs> and whether or not we could do something there um, this is a good er example of an area where costs tend to fluctuate dramatically. Uh, just having paved my own driveway, you know, the cost three years ago versus the cost now, and actually it was in our favor. Um, so I, I think we're going to try to address as much area as we can with what we budget in this area. In, in this, uh, but with the understanding that. Um, asphalt oil based products can fluctuate pretty significantly in cost uh -huh. so uh, okay uh, but we'll definitely look at this area in addition to the others that we're thinking about in relation mm -hmm. to this project right it also includes the parking spaces on that the road heading up to the high school right. yeah, and good. the parking lot the the cafeteria parking lot not just the roadway itself good yeah. um, and I know we've discussed this um, in buildings and grounds meetings, Craigside Drive and the responsibilities of Craigside Drive, part of it, as we know, is residential. So when you say we're going to pave right up until the residential spot and then residential down is... Well, village. I don't think that that's in as bad of shape as okay. um, what is at the, the bend, where the bend starts, that's in... Uh, or need of repair and I do not have an answer yet on the um, who owns the who's responsible with the line is I don't know. once we find out we're gonna take a lot of chalk and we're gonna draw a line <laughs> that we're gonna re chalk every few months to make sure it's clear we never forget where the line is no uh, but we are gonna figure that out yeah I think it, would be it, it takes it research. coming up. it takes yeah, it, no, right? and I know it's we've brought this up before Painting the auditorium and the gymnasium. That's on there. I think that that will uh, really uh, complete what project we started last year. Um, the district office in Mabel Merritt buildings, um, we're proposing some renovations in, in both buildings to create additional educational space and to um, really separate office from educational space. Window shades, tinting, and awnings. This is um, started with the request from the high school because the, I forget which side. Well, I know which side, but I'm trying to figure is it east or which, which facing so, uh, west. the west, thanks, yeah. is um, gets really hot on the second floor yeah. in, the, in that computer room. And also in, um, in different sides of all the buildings you know we're going to address where some tinting or shading can help um, climate control and dehumidifiers in shared spaces this um, really came to light last summer and into the fall um, those days that were that were unbearable and um, we needed some some spaces for people to cool off not only that, to take Regents exams. And to take exams, <laughs> yes, and uh, dehumidifiers <laughs> so that we don't have uh, the Check mold the issues that other it. schools were experiencing. Right. Right. No, I mean, it was so moist. I mean, it was just, and, and it certainly could happen again in the future. Mm -hmm. That's Okay, so here's the, the schedule. 
anticipating a May 21st bond vote, uh, I'll say a successful May 21st bond vote, um, after six months of design, submitting the, the plans to SED for review. Right now there's a backlog of nine months at SED for review. So we could anticipate an August 2020 building permit, send the items out to bid, decide on which items in the scope we're going to award. Hopefully we get everything we want. Start construction costs in 20, or start constru construction in 2020 of October and um, 12 to 16 months, the project will be complete. It's important um, that it be completed at that time because then I will be able to file final expenditure reports and have building aid kick in at the right year so that we can continue our tax neutral projection. So this timeline is important. If we get our building permits earlier, we can send bids out earlier and start construction earlier. But right now this is based on the current um, stated department backlog. And that could change. It could get worse. worse it yeah. keeps getting worse. It seems. It could like. get worse. Right now, they're they're they have a new thing. They're they're trying that they're. Um, well, they're sending review work out to con uh, contractors. They're subbing it out, and that nine months was a lot longer in the past. They've hired people. They're subbing out now. It it could reduce. Let's just say it will. <laughs> so now we're talking about financing this project. Right now, where I'm going to say as of our 6 30 18 uh, year end, we had $767,464 in our capital reserve, $872,840 in our repair reserve. We would expect a full 15 years of building aid once I file the expenditure report by the end of 2021 to match the debt schedule. We're going to have four years of the project in bond anticipation notes, which are short term debt. So I'm going to go right to the next slide because it. Um, it gives a better picture of the financing. Just a quick question. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, sorry. Um, when you say estimated building aid full for 15 years to match debt schedule, so that means that once you submit the construction is complete, you submit the paperwork, we get some percent aid on the total expenditure, and for 15 years, is that? Yes, the okay. payments are amortized over 15 years. Perfect, and that's the length of debt that you would actually take out to do the Correct. Project. Perfect, great. Okay. Thank you. So this is the, um, the schedule that we're going to look at that shows how we can have this referendum be tax neutral. We're working on the 1920 budget. That's the first line, the 630-2020 year. That's the end of 1920 school year. Those are the roof bonds and the roof bond interest and the roof bond building aid allocated to that project for the 1920 year. There won't be any change because we're still going to be under review at the state ed department. So we're not gonna have any construction costs to pay for. For the next four years, I'm proposing that we float bond anticipation notes, which is the short-term debt, because we still have four years left on those roof bonds. So if you look here, in 24-25 is when we would bond. See the difference in principal payments when you have a ban and when you have a bond? You're really paying a lot of principal when you're issuing and paying off a bond. The interest is close, but it's the principal that is going to help us have a bridge between bond issues. So the bridge, 
where we're having bond anticipation notes is what's highlighted. The building aid would kick in in 21-22 if we're on that schedule that I showed you earlier. So in the last column, the additional local share is the additional cash payments that we would have to inject into those years in order to make this tax neutral. That total. What does additional local share mean? I don't think I'm sorry. That is what I'm calling what we would have to come up with during that overlap period. To make it tax neutral. To make it tax that's neutral. What have, that's what we would have to come up with out of our budget so that is that either out of our budget but then it wouldn't be tax neutral because those four years would increase uh, about eight dollars for a four hundred thousand dollar assessment okay but we don't want to do that we want this to be tax neutral we have the debt dropping off in 2024 and we can have our bonds sold in 2024 at the end of the year so how are we going to deal with the overlap the overlap for the four years is a total of 93,814 we have some sources of funds other than the reserve because keep in mind too that we're using our capital reserve in order to pay for part of the project we will borrow for the remaining part of the project the difference is still in those overlap years of short-term debt that we would have to come up with almost a hundred thousand dollars we have it in other pockets that we'd have to discuss the board would discuss where you would want which source of funds we have seventy five thousand dollars earmarked for space consideration in this referendum is space consideration in the district office in Mabel Merritt that 75,000 is a direct result of district office and the modulars that were demolished four years ago those were proceeds that we got from the the damage to the two structures so we saved that money with the intent that we would use it in the future for space consideration. The reason why we have the language classes in Mabel Merritt is because they used to be in the modulars and they were moved. So that 75 is um, a real appropriate use for this project. Where is that 75 currently? Is it in, in its own? It's in a reserve. Reserve? It's in, the, it's in the capital reserve. It's in the capital reserve. But separate from the 767,000. There's, think of accounts, if you, if, if you will. There's different uh, bank accounts, but they're not real, you know, they're just accounts. There's the re capital reserve for 767,000. There's the repair reserve for 862,000. Um, we have the endowment fund, still has $66,000 in it. We have- Which can also be used uh, for buildings we and can grounds. Use that. Um, we have the $75,000 for space consideration. Yeah. We have okay. pockets, we have pockets of savings that we have and um, these are appropriate one-time use items where these funds could be used. Um, if you take the 75 from there, you have just short of, of $25,000 that um, I'm confident that we can come up with. Even pulling out $25,000 to put towards the repair of the bus lift from the repair fund, that's an, an appropriate use. So it's possible, as you can see from this. And again, this is projecting years from now. There's risk, there's interest rate risk. I don't really know what's gonna happen to the interest rates. Um, but again, at that point, we can make determination, are we going to, do we have more fund balance coming in the next two years? Probably. Will we have, um, 
at that time you can choose to strike more things from the referendum take the alternates off the list take other things off the list decisions will still be made years from now based on on the economy and what the bids come in for and what the interest rates are but th as of right now with the projections that we know this is the situation okay. what, um, maybe it was on the page previously um, so the plan is what's the total bond amount the total bond amount the is to, one. The, the yeah, total referendum. The total referendum. Sorry, wrong is word. Is two point three million. Two point three. So, one point six we're going to fund with debt, and the I can't even do the math. Um, the and the other seven hundred thousand from the capital reserve is going to be capital reserve, leaving stub end of sixty seven in there ish. Right. All right. All right. And anything that may come over the next two years, if the board decides to put that into the reserve fund for maybe the next project right. that comes along, yeah. but we still have over eight hundred thousand dollars in the in repair, repair reserve. reserve. Okay. Right. Part of that um, repair reserve is earmarked for the, the field. turf replacement. It's like a hundred something. I don't know exactly at the time that we installed yeah. the turf it was one to two hundred thousand I don't have a new quote on that but it's it's, not, it's, it's certainly entire, not going to be it's, it's not going to be eight hundred thousand no. dollars I can no. tell you that <laughs> um, one thing that I found really helpful was uh, the walkthrough that Nabil took us on so that we could really see I could really see all of these the list um, and really understand what they are um, I'm sure this is in your uh, take the the budget on the road plans but inviting people in to walk the grounds to see what the bond refer what the referendum really <laughs> entails and what it's meant to do is uh, probably and I don't know if people take you up on that or not but I think it would be helpful if they had questions yeah. Yeah. Uh, we, we should at least <laughs> offer it and that's in the plans now offer uh, a couple of opportunities for people to walk around with Nabil yeah uh, perhaps Ann and myself as well um, and ask questions and see the area specifically in addition to that the uh, whatever presentation we're using um, in uh, budget presentations should include whether it be video or images of the spaces okay. that we're talking That's about right. mm -hmm. obviously we're we're not there yet um, you'll see that as we as we go along yeah. uh, but we want to make sure we're illustrating for folks uh, why this work is necessary yeah. and allow them plenty of space to ask questions of uh, um, of the individuals who are involved Thanks. Good. Thanks. 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 Thank you very oh, much. So, just what as you prepare this to post, I think making some place explicit what the bond is for, and maybe um, like you don't see the two point four million dollars anywhere, okay, right. and just we want to make just, sure they do. just make sure because even I c was kind of going through, but that would be the one other thing I would. You got it. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, thanks. Sure. That oh, was yeah. really nice. Thank you, Anne. Thorough. That was good. <laughs> <laughs> it was good. It was. It's a big organized. It's a big organized. Big it was, uh, very well done. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um, moving on to committee minutes. The minutes from the Wellness Committee that was held on December 17th are there for our viewing. Any communication from the public at this time? Sure, question. go ahead. I have a question on the minutes. Mm -hmm. Sorry, can I do that? Yeah, fantastic. Absolutely. What's the what's the PNA survey? Uh, prevention's okay. needs assessment. Okay. 
Uh, so every two years, if I'm not mistaken, uh, through the Prevention Council, we administer uh, prevent the Prevention Needs Assessment, which is an assessment of students take an anonymous survey, okay. and it's a assessment of uh, substance use and abuse or misuse, yep. uh, inclu including drugs and alcohol. Yep. Um, so I believe that's what's referenced in the wellness, the results of that survey we received. Um, I, I, the wellness committee minutes were just posted, I think, today or yesterday. Um, so I believe our school staff is beginning to work with the results yep. of that. Um, and we are meeting, um, I don't have it fresh in mind, John, so excuse me, but I know we're meeting with the um, folks who facilitated the survey because there's some technical aspects of it before sure, sure. we take it and begin to present it publicly oh, um, and share the results. Oh, okay. Yes, uh, we want to make sure we understand the technical detail yeah. um, of the report because some of it is comparative to uh, our students in the past or prior years uh, that it's been taken, also uh, national norms and trends. So it's important on an administrative level that we're understanding of all of that, have a chance to uh, come to understand the survey uh, design and how it's being reported and some of the statistics that are incorporated into it. Uh, so we're fully prepared when we begin to speak to it. Sure. With, uh, okay. uh, with We've folks. had that presented at uh, board meetings in the past. Oh, right. I yeah. assume we'll. Have I'm wondering if that uh, well. la we're kind of using that uh, last uh, board um, workshop for social emotional learning. This certainly would play into that, mm. but I'm trying to also be wary of not making that so big with so mm -hmm. many reports <laughs> that right. we're here all night um, at a meeting in, in June. Um, so we'll find a space to make sure you, it's shared with you. Um, certainly, if you will make room, if that's something you want. Um, yeah, at, I think it was like it, there was that was shared here at the board meeting. It was right. also shared at like a PTA meeting. Yeah. It was yeah. shared in multiple right. venues so people could CTC. see it, CTC yeah. meeting, see it, ask right. questions. Right. Yeah, I forget what grade uh, they start that at. I, I think know it's eighth. eighth. It was at eighth. Yeah, because yeah. my two high schoolers, eighth, I know, tenth, and twelfth. Uh, yeah, PE class actually. Mm -hmm. Right, Andrew. Oh, You're yeah, shaking your head. <laughs> this is a fun PE class. <laughs> <laughs> okay, any communication? No? Okay, moving on to uh, the information reports from December and November. Those are there for our reviewing to uh, review and approve following meeting. Consent agenda minutes, the minutes from the December 18th workshop in addition to the December 27th emergency uh, meeting. May I have a motion? So moved. Second. Any questions or comments? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Consent agenda financial, may I have a motion? Motion. Second. Second. Any questions or comments? Uh, the grants were just recently, or those were on actually on Friday as well. Uh, sorry, I just looked at them again today. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Consent agenda personnel, may I have a motion? So moved. Second. Questions or comments? Thank you, Ann, for correcting the date. Sure. Uh, Thanks we for took care of that. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Moving on to new business, Ms. Famalara. Okay. Oh, this is the CSE CPSC recommendations. The recommended action is, be it resolved that upon the recommendation of the Superintendent of Schools, the Board of Education hereby approves the recommendations of the Committee on Committees on Special Education and Preschool Special Special Education as presented. Excuse me. May I have a motion? So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Any uh, communication from the uh, three members of our audience? Yeah. Okay. With that said, I'd like to make a motion to adjourn. Did you have a question? I have a question. Comment. I do sure, have a question. Go ahead. Sorry, I'm going to ask. No, um, we had had the conversation about the sexual harassment policy, and there was some consideration about uh, definition. Awesome. Thank you. As well as just the overall, I know um, things have been kind of crazy, but I believe yeah. they were working on the um, review of the code of conduct and the 
um, we're still, athletic. We're still anticipating that uh, to have that by the end of the month. Uh, okay. So there should be something before the board shortly there. We have to give our attorney a little bit of time uh, to look through that. Uh, he's anticipating it as well. Um, so that work is moving right along. Uh, the sexual harassment policy I have to follow up on. So. Okay. Thank you. That too. And just while we're talking about policy, we are expecting to get the um, policy book back from Erie Boses uh, soon. Uh, that's what I heard uh, last. <laughs> so and is that, that's is when that Peggy the Delta? and what is, what is, is that them like going over. through the whole thing and telling us what we need? Where we have a what's uh, the process? We have a course of action that <laughs> we'll be bringing to you. A recommended course of action, I okay. believe, um, to try to get some good work done this year. But yes, uh, we'll have to. Ultimately, there's some work. On the front end, um, so a recommendation we'll have for the board, and then we'll um, come back and start to meet regularly as a policy committee. Cool. Great. Okay, may I have a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Yes. <laughs>